the Mac Observer's Mac Geek Cab, episode 675 for Sunday, September 17th, 2017. <laughs> Folks, and welcome to the Mac Observer's Mac Geek Cab. Just like I said moments ago, the show where you send in your questions, we answer your questions. Uh, we're kind of like car talk for Apple geeks. Kids, ask your parents if you don't know what that means. We are here for everyone. We share our tips, we share our cool stuff found. The goal is every single time we get together to learn at least four new things. We raised that bar earlier this year. It used to be three, now it's four. But uh, but we're all up to that challenge and it's a good challenge. And that four applies to all of us, including uh, us, your hosts here too. sponsors for this episode include other world computing at maxsales.com and you as our premium listeners where it uh, you can learn about it at macgeekab.com slash premium here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And here in Fairfield, Connecticut. John F. Braun. John F. Braun. How you doing, man? <laughs> hey. I don't let my radio vo voice out all that often. I don't know why it came out right there. <laughs> Mr. John F. Braun. Um, <laughs> in the morning. Uh, how are you today? Eh, hanging. Okay. Well, hanging is good. Hanging is good. Let's... Uh, Let's jump to Mr. Larry here and see what Mr. Larry has to say. He says, once upon a time, I could insert the characters SS in front of a YouTube URL, whereas I used to, you know, if it was www.youtube.com slash watch whatever, I would do www.ssyoutube.com slash watch whatever. And I could download the video. But now ssyoutube.com makes me buy a subscription to get the goods. So do you know any foolproof methods uh, to download YouTube videos? And uh, of course, before we get into this, I'll, I'll just say that I'll let your, uh, your local copyright laws define what it is you are and aren't allowed to download and have offline copies of. But uh, but yeah, there are quite a few that I've used. Uh, the The real trick that I've found with any of them is staying up to date with YouTube's changes. I don't think YouTube go, spends a lot of effort intentionally on the cat and mouse game, but they do keep making changes to the way they they spit out their video streams these these days, and because of that, the software that's going to pretend to watch it, but really slurp it down and save it and convert it to a file for you needs to be up to date with those changes. So one that, uh, that I use is actually one from, uh, I think it's a company called Digiarty, but it's called Mac X DVDs, free YouTube, uh, downloader for Mac. And I will put a link to that in the show notes. They, um, they, they are a Chinese company, so they wind up being lumped in with, all of those Chinese companies that take the same code base and market it differently. And I think in some uh, cases that's entirely true, but, uh, but with this particular piece of software from them, uh, it has worked flawlessly for me. It's called Mac X YouTube downloader and it works great. It's always available for free out there. And, uh, and so that's, that's what I use. And, uh, and I like it except there's, but frankly, what I find even an easier way, because having to navigate through the, the GUI of all of that um, can get to be a little tedious. So uh, I like the terminal. I spend a lot of time in the terminal and there is a thing called YouTube dash DL that you can install to the terminal. I, you, I install it through homebrew. And if you have homebrew installed, you just type brew space install space YouTube dash DL and it will install it. And, and then usage 
There's actually quite a few options you can do, but simple usage is just to type YouTube-DL space and then paste in your YouTube URL. It will slurp it down. It'll save it, I think, as an M4V file and you're good to go. But you can use some command line switches to extract the audio only and save that in a format that you want. Or, I mean, basically, you can do whatever you want. And uh, and if you have Homebrew installed, then you can keep it up to date with Homebrew. So that's... Um, that's how I do it. Uh, John, you have a way. And then we actually had some Facebook discussion about this too, that I'll, that I'll share, but, but I'll throw it to you first, my friend. Yes, I will. Um, <clears throat> so here's what I use. Um, so one is I run Firefox. And then there's a dandy add-in okay. that they have. Uh, not very well named, but it, it um, it's called Flash Video Downloader. I'll, I'll put a link. Okay. And actually, I have the link here. Um, it's not just for downloading Flash. Got it. Um, but basically, YouTube or other sites, it's smart enough to, and then it, it'll appear in the, uh, you know, on, on the top uh, toolbar, I guess you call it. Sure. Uh, within Firefox, but it's smart enough to parse the uh, HTML and pretty much figure out how to download the video. Yeah. For you in different resolutions. Uh, has a lot of choices. Cool. And, uh, and it's free. You can uh, throw some money and contribute to the author if you'd like. So sure. uh, that's what I've used for ages. I, I don't even bother with, uh, you know, with trying to do it through a. I don't even know if you can do it through Safari. I thought I, I thought I searched one time for add-ons or extensions for Safari, and there's yeah. not really anything that's uh, to grab video. I don't know. No, I I think you're right. I think I think that's right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Downy is one that was mentioned by Brett Terpstra in our uh, in our chat group, our, our chat group, in our Facebook group at uh, macgeekup.com slash Facebook. Where, uh, where, um, uh, they're right there, Downey. And so we'll put a link to that in the, uh, in the show notes too, so that you can check it out and become part of that discussion if you want. So good stuff. Uh, did I see somebody in the chat room? Uh, soft Reno's YouTube converter two in our chat room at MacGeekUp.com slash stream. And that is yet another one that can do it in the, in the GUI and we'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. So there you go. Lots of options. And yeah, it is handy to be able to download some of that stuff. Again, like I said, make sure you adhere to your local copyright laws, but a lot of stuff on YouTube is, is, you know, not copywritten or, or whatever. So, uh, so there you go. I don't know how YouTube feels about that. You can ask them. How's, how about, how about we leave it at that? It's up to you to ask them. We just give you the tools. You swing the hammer where and at whatever you want. Ted asks us on Facebook in that very group. Often I, uh, when registering with a new website, I get an option to create a new account or automatically sign in by linking to my Google, Twitter, Amazon, and or Facebook accounts. I have reflexively turned down these options. And I don't like the idea of providing a new service that may or may not be trustworthy any link to these other critical accounts. Am I being too cautious here? Do other people routinely use these links? So this is, um, this is a great question uh, because on the surface, I totally grok why Ted sees it this way. Uh, you know, these are your accounts. It might be like Google might be, you know, your, your email password Facebook has a lot of private information, which is all kind of made public anyway. But, you know, I, I get it. Like these are accounts you use every day and you don't want to give people credentials to those accounts. Here's the good news. When you are using these for authentication, what I'll call remote authentication, it is all being done by proxy and you are never share. Well, you should be never sharing your credentials with anyone. What what happens is a process that either is or very similar to what's called OAuth or open authentication, where your you authenticate with Facebook on Facebook, right? You never give some, you know, third party site. In fact, at Mac Observer, if you want to comment in our 
comments, you can log in to TMO using your Facebook credentials or your Twitter credentials. But you never give us those credentials. We don't have them. What happens is when you say, I want to log into TMO with Facebook, you are redirected to Facebook. Uh, and Facebook, if you're logged in and Facebook says hi, if not, it says, who are you? And you log in at Facebook. Like You're never giving us those credentials. So you, you, you get yourself logged into Facebook. And then it says, hey, OK, you came here via the Mac Observer. They are asking to use your credentials to log into their site. And they are also asking for the following information and or permissions. Now, for TMO, we're asking for a very, very small set of information. I think what we ask for is two things, your name and your email address. And your email address is what we actually use to create your account so that if you have an account, um, you know, if you want to do other things with your account, like sign up for a Mac, you get premium subscription or any of those things. Uh, that's how we that's how we have that. Um, but Facebook's very upfront about this. Like, this is what they're, they're doing now. We don't. That's the that's the extent of what we ask for. Uh, and I think we ask for email. We might not even I know there was a period of time where we were going back and forth on that. And I just can't remember where we landed, but um, and what we absolutely needed. And that's sort of how a website should should look at this is asking for the minimum that it can that it can get away with. At least that's how I think about it. Some websites, again, depending on what you're using the authentication for, might ask for access to your entire Facebook profile, or some might ask, ask for access to post as you to Facebook. That might be something like uh, Instagram, right? You log in and it's like, do you want to be able to post your Instagram photos to your Facebook account? If so, you need to give Facebook permission to allow us to do that on your behalf. Um, and you can say no to that. And you can actually go into Facebook settings and edit all that. But the thing to remember is at no point have you given us your Facebook password. So it's just using Facebook's proven authentication methods and systems instead of ours. That's really what's happening. And then we, sh we share a token back and forth with, with Facebook that says, yeah, this person's authenticated there, so let them in here. And that's all that happens. And that token is unique to us and that relationship with you. And, uh, and that's how it works. And that's how it works with Google or Twitter or Amazon or any of these other. Uh, I, didn't, I, don't, I didn't know that Amazon was doing OAuth, but maybe they are. But that's how OAuth works. So in a sense, it's more secure because you don't have yet another password out there. Um, so there you go. That's, that's my thoughts on it, John. You? Uh, I typically don't use them. What's the reason for that? Uh, um, and that depending on what device or or um, my preference would be to do a, a individual username and password because, for each site. Yep, because the plugin, depending on the device you're using, may not be available. You know what I'm saying? Uh, wait, wait, wait. This, uh, the what authentication different? scheme to access a service may not be uh, available across different environments. So that's why I'm hesitant. I don't At understand. Times, like, I mean, if, if the way to log in is to authenticate with Facebook, when would that, I mean, it would only not be available if Facebook wasn't available, right? Right. What I'm saying is depending on the, on the, depending on the app, the environment that you're in oh access I, to a service may they may not offer a facebook login uh across all of your environments that you use okay i mean that's a i i, I get what you're saying that's a pretty I, I think that's only a theoretical use case i haven't run into that anywhere I mean, if somebody's going to bother to implement what, what we're calling here social login or an OAuth login, you're going to put that everywhere that you're going to ask people to log in. I, I mean, it, having done it, they make it so ridiculously easy mm -hmm. to to implement everywhere that it's frankly way easier than maintaining your own, uh, you know, login slash authentication system. And we're keeping up with security and all of that stuff. Um, so. 
I, I get what you're saying, but I, I think it's a straw man. I, it's like, yeah, it doesn't actually sure. exist out there. Yeah. 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 I just had one. It, it was, I don't know what was it? Pokemon go or something like that, but it was some, some app that, you know, is like, you want to log in using username and password or you want to log in you're using, yeah. I think Facebook. And I'm like, The thing yeah. is, username or password, I could access it both through uh, through multiple interfaces. But I see what you're saying. But yeah, the you're, thing is, they're safe. It's never revealed. Right. And actually, the other thing is that they all typically, and it's you know a good thing to go through, will offer a list of apps that you've uh, authorized. And you may want to go through that every now and then. Yeah, we'll we'll put a link into the show notes about uh, uh, to uh, there is a place on your Facebook account where you can go and see all the things that are authorized to use you, all the external apps and services and sites that are authorized to use it. And you can, you can go in and, and kill those off. So yeah. Uh, and same with Twitter every now and then I'll right. look through my Twitter account and see what apps I've authorized to use my uh, Twitter right. credentials. And right. sometimes I may want to clear some of them out. Yeah. 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 And then, and then it'll just stop working and that's it. Like the site has no other way. Once you kill off that token, uh, it has no other way of, of getting to you. So, and, uh, and as somebody in the chat room saying actually right in the show notes saying that Google plus does the same thing, which of course, yeah, yeah. So we will find those links. And when I say we, I'm hoping somebody in the chat room can find those links for us while we're finishing the show. Otherwise we'll, 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 we'll make it happen one way or another. So, all righty. You want to, um, now well, let's go to, let's go to Ken here, uh, because Ken has experienced woes with multiple app stores this week. Uh, the first one, he says with the release of the new iTunes 12.7 with the app store having been removed, I'm guessing people are wondering what will occur when the app you always use gets pulled from the app store and you can't re-download it, I'd be interested in your thoughts as I use this as my backup to sync across many devices without having to re-download. Yeah, so iTunes or Apple in releasing iTunes 12.7 earlier this week removed significant functionality. I mean, they did sort of in a general sense, the thing that lots and lots of people have been clamoring for, which is make iTunes more simpler, but they, you know, they took away the feature people didn't want to them to take away. And in a, in a sense, didn't replace it with anything. Um, and I think that was sort of the hope was make iTunes simpler, but give me another app instead. Well, you have another app instead. It's just not from Apple and you have to pay for it because developers need to eat. It's called iMazing. Um, if you have those app files saved on your computer, iMazing can go ahead and put them back on your phone uh, for you just fine. So that is the workaround. In, in a sense, uh, Apple has has done a reverse Sherlocking and uh, instead of taking a feature that someone else offered in a third party app and integrating into, in, into their own, they have divested themselves of a certain feature <laughs> and that makes for sales for third party apps, which, um, Hey, you know, there you go. So yeah, I, I amazing is going to be your friend in that regard, at least until Apple, if, I mean, we have no indication from them what their plans are, but, um, there you go. That's, that's how that works. Before we move on to question number two, any any thoughts on on this? Any other paths that people like Thanks, Ken Apple. might use? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it wasn't. It, it didn't work quite the way people expected it to for for a while, anyways. The whole app section of iTunes. So, I think that's why they cleared it out. What didn't work about it worked exactly that I the way I thought it would work. I could buy stuff on my computer and then go download it on my phone. Or the app section, the section that would show your apps on your device. Mm -hmm. I've, I've found that for quite a while, it never quite synced with what was on my device. Huh. It's just me. Really? I yeah. used to use it all the time to rearrange, uh, you know, my screens and clear out apps and all of that stuff. I Oh, yeah. And that I was, you know, and the thing is, I was looking for, for that recently. And I'm like, oh, that's right. It's not. It ain't there, there anymore. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I amazing is, is your friend and you can get a trial and all that stuff. 
Um, they're not currently a sponsor of this show, but I, they, they certainly were for a long time. Uh, we would have recommended them either way. Uh, but I think, I think, no, okay, so they, they took that. I, I don't know if the coupon code MGG still gets you 20% off. I'm trying to figure that out um, in, my, uh, in my haste here. Uh, I can't, no, I don't want to pay education disc. I don't know. Yeah, I can't, I can't find a place to put in a coupon code, but it used to be MGG or maybe MGG 20 was the coupon code there. I can't remember, but if that works, let us know. We'll put it on the page at macgeekup.com slash sponsors, where you can always see the deals that even if the sponsor's not current, um, if they exist, we like to keep them there. So there you go. Uh, that's a, that's a good resource for you. In fact, I'll put that in the show notes, uh, dot com slash sponsors for you there. And okay. So question number two is, uh, let me go back to Ken here is second. Have you ever had the issue where an app has uh, an, a, a Mac OS app? So purchased through the Mac app store has in app purchases. He says, I have an app that I use all the time called backup flicker for iPhoto or black up backup flicker for photos. And I purchased the advanced features via in-app purchase. Now, for some reason, the app doesn't know that I have those enabled. But if I try to repurchase those features, I am prompted that I already have this. But then it goes into an infinite loop and never activates this particular section of the uh, settings. Pressing restore purchases gives me the same result. I've tried approaching the developer, but they never respond. I tried Apple and they basically said, bad luck. They did tell me they could contact the developer, but as it's a big secret, I don't know the outcome, if any, of what they might or might not discuss. He says, I'm guessing maybe there's a file I need to delete, but I can't find it. I have deleted and reinstalled the app with the same result. Yeah, so what you're dealing with here is, in a sense, kind of, John, what you were alluding to in the with the social login stuff, that a developer has implemented a feature and has not implemented all uh, corner cases where that might not work. So there's something about uh, Ken's setup here that makes it so how the developer wrote in the hooks to the in-app purchase stuff doesn't quite register. And Ken has tried to sort of pave the path clear in hopes of, of bringing that in, but, uh, but hasn't been able to. So, Two things. Uh, number one, you know, I always think about this and I do have a, a, a technical solution here. So I'm going to rant for like a second with in-app purchases or really anything purchased in the app store. I've always said that unless a developer really goes out of their way to change this, anybody selling store uh, things in, in the app store has one customer and that customer is Apple. And anyone buying things from the app store, you are buying them from one company, and that is Apple. And Apple is then acting as the intermediary to uh, to broker that purchase and to to get things from the the developer that you might want as the customer and to get money from you that the developer might want. And of course, as with all uh, arbitrage, uh, Apple takes their cut of, of handling this transaction, but they also obscure it, like you said. You can try and get in touch with the developer, but you've never really had a relationship with that developer, not even when you purchased this feature from them. So it makes it difficult, but it also gives you one place to go to to complain. And in this case, I would just tell Apple, I want my money back. Um, I know it's been a while since you've purchased it. You probably don't actually desert. You've like already gotten your money's worth out of this feature. But at least if you do that with Apple, it might trigger a little bit of something that gets back to the developer and maybe they'll pay attention. So that's one way. The other way uh, might be to remember that all of the apps from the App Store are sandboxed. So you can take a look in the sandbox to see if there's something to delete because this is where all of those apps have to store things. So if you go into your home folder and you go to the library folder, and if you don't see that, go to the go menu and hold down the option key and the library folder should exist uh, or should show up right there. I think, right, John, is that still the way it works? I know they keep changing that functionality. It's not happening for me. 
But okay. um, but you get to your library folder. We'll 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 find an article that'll get you there if if our paths don't work. Once you're there, there's a folder called containers, and inside containers, this is the top of the sandbox. You will see a slew of folders starting with com. They're in reverse domain order. And so you're going to look for the folder that is the one for whatever this app is. And then uh, really, if you're going to delete the app, just delete the folder. You'll lose any of the uh, settings that might have been here. But that I think that's sort of the point is you want to pave it clean um, and, and get that stuff out of there. So paving that out of the way and then reinstalling the app uh, might do this. Or in fact... You could probably you could just blow this folder away and then rerun the app and see if that'll do it, too. But always remembering that that sandbox is there inside home library containers is the place to uh, to start that stuff. Yeah. Good, John. I like the sandbox. I won the sandbox. <laughs> you don't want to do that. You don't want to play that game today, John? No. OK, come on. It'd be fun. All right. Uh, let's see. Where are we here? Moving. Come on. No, you don't want to play the I won the sandbox game. OK, uh, I'll even I'll even take the the uh, even numbers if you want. It's just fun to play. Uh, you want to take us to Kirit, please? Kirit has an interesting one that I have never seen, but. Let's give it a shot. I have a MacBook Air 13 inch early 2015 with 10.12.6. Since the update, the Bluetooth just says Bluetooth unavailable. And by that, I think he means what happens when you click on the Bluetooth menu, which you can choose to put in your menu bar. If you go to system preferences, Bluetooth and click the little box that says show Bluetooth in the menu bar. Um, I've Googled and I've done this, thrown away Bluetooth preferences, good. Reset the SMC. Okay. Reinstall Sierra. Ooh. Okay. Still not there. Any thoughts? So I implemented some Google Foo as well, and those are all good things to try. I think he's tried everything except one that I found someone suggest, and that is to reset your NVRAM, or PRAM, as it's called. Because I believe uh, a Bluetooth setting is stored somewhere in there. So resetting the NVRAM <clears throat> certainly can't hurt. I don't know if it's something you should be doing all the time. But no, it, I, 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 I don't hesitate to do that when I have a problem. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's yeah. always something to try because the contents yeah. get corrupted and you may have things happen like your Bluetooth doesn't think it's there anymore. Right, right. The final thing is that, well, your Bluetooth module may in fact not be there anymore or at least broken or defective defective yeah and the way you could probably tell that is so if you go to the apple menu about this mac system report hardware bluetooth should see something there it's going to give you all sorts of statistics about your bluetooth module if you don't see anything there then i would say that your hardware is kaput or your bluetooth module um there's a good news. There, there's a there's a silver lining to this, though, John. You and that's that you can buy a new Bluetooth module for like six bucks or certainly less than 10 from Amazon. And. Uh, and not only will that because I've done this where I've just, you know, I had I, I guess it's this computer here. I, my Bluetooth module works. But it didn't support like Bluetooth 4 LE because it's only a 2011 iMac. And so I bought a uh, this just a little USB dongle. I mean, it barely sticks out of the USB port. It's just, you know, sits right in there and it's Bluetooth 4 LE. It cost me, I don't know, you know, eight bucks or something on Amazon. And it just works. And the cool part is I didn't need to install any drivers. Uh, the Mac just saw it and made it my primary Bluetooth module. Like, I don't even know how I'd go back and use the internal one short of, you know, removing this one physically from the USB port. So I think for Curate here, just, you know, spend the whatever eight bucks. I'll put a link to the one that I bought. It's not currently available, but you can see a picture of it. 
And there are others on Amazon that look very, very similar. In fact, if you scroll down in the what what other items do customers buy after viewing this one, you'll see several that look exactly the same. Just buy one of those and uh, and you should be all right. Well, the other thing is looking at the date of the machine. Yeah. Let's say 2015 and you have Apple Care. Oh, well, that's. Oh, yes. (laughs) You may want to go to Apple and say, please fix it or at the very least. Have them try to diagnose it for you. Uh, any excuse to get a new motherboard from Apple at any time during your Apple Care? <laughs> no, seriously. Like I, I, I highly. If you have Apple Care, and really you should. I, and I know extended warranties are, you know, silly uh, in most cases, but I've found them to be quite valuable with Macs. Um, you get a diff, a completely different level of service with Apple Care. Oh well, every portable or notebook Mac that I've had, I've gotten Apple care yeah. for. I don't think it's worth it for desktop. That's oh, just my I, humble opinion. I disagree because it's way cheaper well, I didn't on get a it desktop. For, well, I didn't get it for my mini. Oh yeah. I, I, with an iMac because an iMac is basically a portable in, in the uh, way the tech is put in there. It's all flat and, and it's got a screen, but I think with the iMac, like I, I always buy my uh, Apple care from a company called LA computer company at lacomputercompany.com because they sell it at a discount. And uh, I think even for a 5K iMac, you pay like 179 bucks or something for Apple Care. It's like, it's silly not to buy it. And it'll save your bacon. And like I said, if there's anything that you can find or that Apple can find that gives them an excuse to replace your motherboard at like the two plus year mark, man, that's a win. In my book, because you get a brand new motherboard, your GPU, you can get it. You know, if you can get a new GPU from them, you're certainly getting a new CPU or often getting a new CPU when they do the motherboard replacement. Not always, though. Some of them are removable. But um, yeah, I highly recommend it. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah, because um, Bluetooth can come in handy if not for talking to peripherals. Um, a lot of the advanced features within Mac OS uh, need Bluetooth on to work. Right. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely, definitely. All right. Well, we'll put a link in the show notes to LA Computer Company's Apple Care. It's good stuff. And then when you get Apple Care, save, uh, take what I do is any, and I do this with hard drives too, because you can often convince Seagate and Western Digital to replace your hard drives if there's just like even the inkling of things. So I put a note in my calendar six months before. Apple care, any extended warranty that that really matters to me is about to expire. And that way I'm just more hyper aware of, okay, you know, we're in the home stretch here. Is there anything going on that I could ignore, but could also be the thing that if I'm willing to part with my computer for, you know, whatever, two to four days might actually get me up, uh, up to speed. And I just, I put that in my calendar as a little reminder. And then I don't think about it until, until the time comes. So just little tidbits from, you know, the mind of Dave. Yeah. Good, John. Very good. All righty. You know, I want to um, I want to take a minute and talk about our uh, our sponsor for this episode, which is Otherworld Computing at MacSales.com. They are. You know, we say this all the time. I mean, they've been around so long that they just know what they're doing and they make some great stuff. Uh, they, they understand all their products, but they finally now are able to ship in quantity. their Thunderbolt three docks. And these things are awesome. Uh, I mean, it, I've got, uh, I, I tried their Thunderbolt one dock and then I used their Thunderbolt two dock and they, you know, they, They engineer these things to have all the stuff that you need where you need it, right? So uh, their Thunderbolt 3 dock, it has uh, on the front of it. So like it's a a great size dock. It would sit like right with your computer or, um, you know, underneath. It's great. Uh, It's got an SD card on the front, a headphone jack on the front. And a high powered USB 3.1 Gen 1 port right on the front. Then on the back, 
It's got four more of those USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, one of which is high powered. So that allows you to charge your 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 iPad and even your phone faster than than standard USB. Uh, it's got SP diff out. It's got FireWire 800 out. Uh, and of course, you can get an inexpensive cable to even to go from FireWire 800 to 400. So you uh, all your old peripherals, gigabit Ethernet. It's got two Thunderbolt 3 ports. One goes upstream to the computer, but one can go downstream to whatever you want. Uh, it's got a mini display port out on it. So you can go straight out to those uh, mini display port stuff. It's just, it's brilliant. I'm, I'm really, really impressed with, uh, with how they've put this thing together. And, you know, that, that headphone jack that I call the headphone jack on the front, it's actually headphones or microphone it's audio in and out ports so uh, if you've got yourself a thunderbolt 3 computer go check this out at maxsales.com and if you've got a thunderbolt 2 computer go check out their thunderbolt 2 dock too it's uh, it's stellar stuff really great company they know what they're doing and uh, they're great people too so that's otherworld computing at maxsales.com our sincere thanks to them for sponsoring this episode John, I, I also, while we're here, I want to thank our premium subscribers for, for this week. Uh, and I want to, I want to then tell you about something that's, that's going on in a change that's likely to be made um, to the logistics of, of this for some of you. So, but first the important part, thanks very much to our premium subscribers that renewed uh, this week on the biannual $25 every six month plan. That's EO Lake S. Stephanie E, James H, Dominico B, Joe S, David T, Mike F, William P, Todd Z, Erica R, and Graham M. And on the monthly $10 plan, James B, Frank A, John G, Paul M, James C, Sebastian K, J C, Gary B, John D, and a one-time $5 payment from Harvey S. Thanks to all of you. It, it really means a lot. And now here's, um, here's something that's going on, John. You, you're, you're aware of the, the, the financial impact of this, but you aren't aware that I've hit my wall. Uh, so we have currently two ways of, of accepting payments from you. One is PayPal, uh, which sort of is self-evident how that works. And then the other is we can take your credit cards directly. And uh, the credit card relation, the relationship with the mer merchant processor and, and gateway processors that we have has been getting more and more expensive going in the wrong direction, especially compared to the way the, um, the rest of the industry has been going. And now we are at a point where our average uh, across the month because of the flat fees we have to pay and minimums and all of this stuff, we are paying a 16% fee as a privilege to take your credit what? cards. Yeah. That's it's, nuts. It's crazy. Right. So if we get a hundred bucks from people that uh, send in with credit cards, we get to keep 84 of that. That's not really your intent. I know when you're sending us these contributions and your support, I know that your intent is not for uh, 16 of every hundred dollars to go to these, uh, you know, jackass banks that that don't want to really do things the way that they used to. Uh, so uh, but that's fine. That's just how it goes. It's it's the way the industry is. There are other services we can use uh, as our credit card processor. What I've been trying to do, and I don't believe we're going to be successful at this, and this is why we're sort of telling you about this dirty laundry here. Uh, what I've been trying to do is migrate over all of your authorizations. We've And we've done this many times, believe it or not, migrated your authorizations over without you knowing, because that's sort of the point. Um, but now because we have to change the way we're doing it. It's not going to be cost effective for us to migrate your authorizations over. In fact, the company that has all your authorizations is holding them hostage to the tune of about a thousand bucks or more to release that information to us uh, so that we can then import it into whatever new engine we move to. Wow. Yeah. Um, so here's what's likely to happen. We haven't implemented anything yet, but it, we're close enough that 
I, I don't, I think this will be the path in one way, shape or form. Um, when it comes time for your renewal, uh, if you do nothing and, and there'll be some paths for you to take, but assuming you do nothing, right, you just wait, you know, let's say we're talking about uh, Stephanie E here who just hit, uh, you know, her, her uh, six month renewal this past week. So six months from now, our system will try and charge Stephanie E, but because we will have long since terminated our relationship with the processor that uh, that Stephanie is authenticated with, it will fail. Uh, because we won't be allowed to process through that because we're not paying them their exorbitant monthly fees anymore. And then Stephanie will get an email. It says, hey, your credit card failed. Can you come in and, and update your credit card? And when you come in and update, you will actually be migrating to the new credit card processor and then all will be well. But it does unfortunately require a step from you. We will send an email out to each of you that that is in this situation explaining exactly uh, perhaps less long winded than what I've explained here. And uh, and you can go and do this at any time. I know that we will lose some of you uh, in in this. And, and I don't like that. But I also like a lot less the fact that we are paying these exorbitant fees, especially, I, I, you know, I don't like it because it's I mean, there's the obvious part where it's like, well, this is money that we should have. But Really, what bothers me the most about it is that, you know, this is money that you folks are contributing to us and uh, and it's not getting to us. And I that, like I know that sounds sort of reverse and counterintuitive, but that's the thing that every time I look at these reports it's like, and they're just stealing this money. This is not cool. So uh, but there's a better way. Like we can get it down to less than three percent again, which is where it always was prior to about a year ago. We've been fighting this battle and it's time to finally just, you know, um, we got to stop the bleeding. So my hope is that each and every one of you uh, will go through this slightly painful, but not awful process of, you know, reauthenticating with us when, uh, when that time comes and, and, and we will, we will remain in that same state status. But, uh, but I, I also know the realities of this and I know that we're going to lose a few in the process and I don't like that, but, um, but it's the lesser of all evils at this point, And we're kind of in a pickle. So there you go. I just wanted to let you know why uh, it's happening, what's happening. And, uh, you know, transparency now, is what we do here. Now, what about, because I've actually been using this as of late and I'm very happy with that. I don't know the impact to the merchant, but mm -hmm. um, of course you can use PayPal to charge to a You register your credit cards with PayPal and then you can you say pay with PayPal and it charges your card. And I assume PayPal gets a piece of that. Yeah. So PayPal's fees are about that. They're they're just shy of 3%. And and you can, and we could, and, and actually... <laughs> It, it, you probably haven't noticed this, folks, but if you as of Thursday night, if you come to the website to sign up new, you don't have the option of putting your credit card in any other way than via PayPal, because I turned the old one off. It's still charging people that have pre-authenticated this way, of course. It's just not an option. I'm not going to give you a way to sign up with a system that we're going to walk away from. Uh, but yeah, so we could do it through PayPal. The, honestly, the biggest problem with that is there are people out there that, for whatever reason, are not comfortable using <laughs> PayPal. And uh, and so we want to have another option for you. And we always have. And that's fine. Now, one of those options that we could move to is called PayPal Pro or PayPal uh, via uh, Braintree. Is that who it is? Whatever it is. Uh, they have one where you don't actually know that we're using PayPal as the processor. Like you don't have to go to PayPal site. You just, just like you always have, you give us your credit card number and it, it just processes and we choose whoever we're using on the back end. You would have no way of knowing uh, who we currently use, nor would you have any way of knowing we're using PayPal. So essentially just treating PayPal like a merchant provider. And that's one way we might go. Another way is a company called Stripe um, that is more likely the direction we're going to go largely because it would also allow us to begin using Apple pay, uh, right on the web. So, uh, so I think we're going to move to Stripe, but, but you know, we'll, we're, we're investigating all the options. So we'll see, we'll see where we wind up. There you go. Thanks. Thanks you say? I said, banks. 
Thanks. Shake yeah, my I just fist at them. I just don't understand the part that flabbergasts me is because you've got th- things like you know PayPal Pro and Stripe and Square and you know all of these these businesses that have sort of cropped up because getting a merchant account and a gateway account and all of that is you know a big headache and and these people are doing it on your behalf and they're all charging you less than three percent, many of whom aren't even charging a a monthly you know maintenance fee or anything. I don't understand why the 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 folks that are doing you know the gateway and the merchant processing are charging so much more but um there is some flexibility that comes with that (laughs) yeah i I know but it's like if your customers are leaving in droves or not even coming to you in the first place anymore that's not such a good business model but whatevs so yeah they figure you don't have a choice but uh but that's the thing they're not they're not stupid they know we have a choice i don't know anyway uh I, I, you know, I always try to keep the dirty laundry out of the, uh, out of the show. Cause it's just not interesting. Um, or it's just not topical. It might be interesting. It depends on who you are, <laughs> but uh, oh, I'm sure on your small business show, this would be uh, exactly. If you haven't discussed it already. <laughs> this is quite appropriate. It's quite appropriate, but because it's going to impact you folks. So anyway, let's move on. Thank you for your time on that. And, uh, and we will, we will endeavor to. To do that, you know, while we're on it, it's a perfect segue into Ken's question from Facebook, because one of the things coming with iOS 11 on Tuesday is Apple Pay Cash and person to person payments. Or is it? Um, And Ken on Facebook asked, whatever happened to this? Uh, He says, I've been running the gold master of iOS 11 on my phone and I don't see any. Uh, indication that this is there. So Apple with iOS 11 at WWDC, they announced Apple pay cash uh, and person to person payments. And the way it works is inside messages, a new little app will show up at the bottom that lets you use Apple pay to send money uh, person to person. That app is not there yet. And if you visit Apple's website and now the press release about it all, you will see that it, It says coming this fall. Uh, I have, uh, in fact, it says exactly person to person payments and Apple pay cash will be available in the U S on iPhone, iPad, and Apple watch this fall. Well, September 19th is not the fall in the U S. So I don't think we're going to see it as part of, this. I've reached out to Apple. They have no comment on the matter. They just refer us to the press release, which says the, the phrase that I read to you. So uh, I, I don't think we're going to see it on Tuesday, but it is coming this fall, which means sometime before uh, about December 21st. So between whatever, September 21st and, and December 21st, my guess is it'll be you know somewhere in the middle there. But we, I, that's just my guess. I have, I have no inside information on this. Um, so there you go. Nice little segue in any thoughts on that, John, before we move on to other iOS 11 questions. Well, look forward to it. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it's a great thing. I've, I've used, uh, you know, PayPal obviously to send money person to person, but Venmo and I mean, it's, there's great ways of doing it. I, I think it's awesome to be able to get money back and forth without having to oh, use yeah. cash. No, it's good to have options. Cause, yeah. um, well, there are a lot of people that are, in this same space, I, I became aware the other day, my bank, they're offering uh, money transfer service as well because everybody wants to get a little piece of the action. Yeah. What's the one that the banks are all offering? It's Zelly. Zelly, I think. Ch- uh, Chase, I think. Well, it's it, so uh, Zelly was smart, right? Zellypay.com. Uh, they, there's a lot of people trying to compete with essentially with Venmo here, right? Because they're, they're the big ones. But, um, Everybody wondered how Zelly would compete and the way Zelly competes is they have a relationship with your bank already. Like they went and got relationships with lots of banks and inside your bank's app, you can just do it right from there. And then so they they jumped up pretty quick. Um, so we'll put a link to them, too. But you probably already have a free Zelly pay account, which is sort of the key. Um, and not that you can't. I mean, you can get Venmo for free, too, but it's already set up and linked to your bank and all that stuff with Zelly. So Z E L L E for those of you wondering how they choose to spell that. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, all right. Andrew again on, in our Facebook group 
says, I just used iOS 11's screen recording for the first time to send a little tutorial to a family member on some settings changes. So handy. Um, and it's true, you know, being able to do these screen recordings and you start them from control center uh, is, I mean, it's great. It, it changes everything. It makes, makes life easy, makes life easy. Uh, any thoughts on that, John? No, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, it's there. Screenshots are quite a bit different in iOS 11. Uh, if you, if you trigger a screenshot, which, uh, on the iPhones, uh, through the iPhone eight and eight plus, uh, is just, you know, home button and lock button previously with iOS 10, it just saves your screenshot to your photo, your camera roll. And that's that mm -hmm. with iOS 11, it actually floats your little screenshot in a corner of the screen and you can dismiss it and it will then do the, the same thing and save it to your camera roll, or you can hit it. You can tap on it and right there you can do edits to it and then you can share it. And after you share it, it asks you, okay, now that you've done what you initially wanted to do with this, do you even want me to save it to your camera roll? Or was this just a screenshot to sh show somebody something and you don't want it cluttering up your, your camera roll. And so you can discard it after you've you know sent it with messages or airdropped it or any of those things, which is pretty good. So, yeah, I like it. Oh, and another tip, because this drove me crazy, actually, uh, you know, uh, with iOS 10, if you want to enable or disable or tweak your airdrop settings, you just swipe up to control center. You won't see airdrop in control center when you swipe up uh, in iOS 11. So there are two ways to do it. Number one, you can go into settings uh, and I believe it's in general airdrop. It is. And there you, there you can choose the, from the three options you're used to off contacts only or everyone. But there's another way, a secret way, John. And that is if you swipe to control center, it's different in iOS 11. But there's one section that has four buttons in it. Airplane mode, cell radio on or off, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth toggle. But if you uh, 3D touch on that, it will expand and add two options. One is airdrop and the other is your personal hotspot. And so you can toggle those right from within control center with a quick 3D touch on the on the one that has airplane mode in it. That's the best way to remember. Pretty cool, huh, John? Yeah. Yeah. I'm liking it. Are you running the, the GM of iOS 11, John? No. Well, of course you're not. Okay. You know, now I... Hmm. Now that I have a second iOS device. Hmm. Uh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. So I got a, uh, yeah. So I now have a, a an iPad Air again. Okay. All right. Did you get yours repaired or did you just buy a new um, one or, or arrange uh, for a new one? The, it's one that I'm, it's one that I have on loan. Okay. Um, the, the person that I have working on fixing. Got it. Mine okay. um, did not. Uh, but th there were two directions to take to try to fix it. And the sure. one direction that was taken did not solve the problem. So, Got it. so I have one, it's identical to my other one, except it's a Wi-Fi only instead of, Oh, okay. My original one had, um, uh, also had cellular in it. Right. Right. And a little deal. Like I forget. It was like, it's like the team 200, 200 megs. Yeah. 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 Which is, you know, not free a ton. Yeah. But, but it's free for life. It's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the other thing of course is, you know, I can toss my, uh, Verizon SIM in there. Mm -hmm. That works. Does, does that work? Has that worked for you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it did work for me. Okay. Or the other solution is that I could, you know, make my phone a hotspot. Yeah, tether it up. Connect. Uh, yeah. Yeah, if I, if I am, if I do need that sort of coverage. Yep. But um, yeah, it's nice to, it's nice to have an iPad again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How did you get your data onto it? Because that's our next question from listener David. So I'm, I'm curious. To, so, you uh, know, I, I gave up on it. Right. Yeah. It's been a while since you burned that thing up. Yeah. Uh, well, the uh, the charger guys burned it up. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was a, a year ago, June, right? That you. Yeah. Burned and the thing, thing is, up, you know, so. I thought I, I had given up on it. So I um, so I got rid of my uh, backup. Of sure. It. Sure. So when I got this one, you know, I'm setting the thing up and uh, it's like 
So do you want to start new or do you want to uh, restore from uh, iCloud backup? And I'm like, huh, you know, let me try this. And it's like, oh, well, there's your iPhone 7 backup in the cloud. You want to you want to import that? And I'm like, sure. Huh. Yeah. All right. And it it only had a warning. It's just like, okay, by the way, um, your settings will not come over because I guess they're significantly different. Because it's a different type of device. Yeah. Yeah. But it brought all my apps over. Um. You know, it was sitting there for a while saying waiting, you know, it, it pulled them all down from the cloud there. And um, I'm trying to think if it actually downloaded the iPad version, if it was available. Oh, that's an, no, it, Some, wouldn't, it wouldn't have. It would download the universal version and the iPad resources. But if there was like like there were some apps where it was like, you know, app and then app HD and it's not going to go get app HD for you. No, it did Right. It didn't. But then when I went through the app store, there were some yeah. where they had an enhanced. Uh, so they all worked, but yeah. they have, you know, like E-Trade and, you know, a lot so of my what, banking what apps. What made you decide that you want You didn't want to start fresh, especially after so long. Uh, just tedious. All right. <laughs> OK. Yeah. yeah. It's it's not it's as just tedious a, it's just a as starting you think. Yeah. It's I just a it, it was just let me try this and see how painful it is. Sure. Well, first is it even going to work? And I was like, wow, that's, that's actually pretty neat. And yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I know you're a big fan of nuke and pave and starting from scratch. And, well, uh, I mean, sometimes, sometimes, but, um, yeah. but to me, it's just the amount of time I would have had to spend, you know, looking yeah. at my phone, you know, re-downloading all the apps manually. This, this got me to a, a point huh. that just saved me a lot of time. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Plus you're going to, I mean, if, if this guy is able to fix your other iPad, then you've got to do it again. So yeah, there you go. Cool. Uh, well, you know, that, um, that leads us perfectly into David's question where he asks, he says, I got caught. My kids have an iPhone seven and seven plus they mutually agreed. They didn't like the size of their screens and wanted to switch. I made sure they had up-to-date iCloud backups. I erased the devices, swapped SIMs, and proceeded to download the backup. I was able to complete the job with the 7 to the 7 Plus, but I get an error that I'm unable to restore the backup from the 7 Plus to the 7. The 7 was up-to-date with iOS 10.3.3, but the 7 Plus was still on 10.3.2. So as I proceeded, the 7 Plus wanted to update to 10.3.3. I'm not sure if this is the reason for the error, as there isn't much detail. Uh, I tried to find the old 10.3.2 software file, which I did, but since Apple is no longer signing these, I was unable to complete it. I still have an up-to-date backup in the cloud that both phones now have 10.3.3. The iCloud backup is from 10.3.2, and I don't have a local backup. Can I make my 17-year-old happy? As she is giving me nasty looks as I type this message. <laughs> yeah. Uh, other short of buying her a vehicle, uh, I think there there is actually a way to to make this work. the The trick is, yeah, you can't restore a backup onto an iPhone running an older version of iOS than the backup was made with. But once you get that iPhone up to ten three three. You should be able to restore a backup to it. I mean, you have to, uh, once you get it up to 10.3.3, you have to go through and factory wipe the the iPhone to get it to even offer to grab an iCloud backup. But you do that in settings. Uh, oh, I'm in the wrong settings here. You go to settings, general, and then at the bottom of the settings menu is reset. And, uh, and you do erase all content and settings. And then that'll sort of bring you back around. And, and that should pull that should pull that backup down, even though the backup was made with 10.3.2. Just like to your point, John, I mean, obviously the backup of your iPhone 7. Oh, maybe it, it, it actually your backup was newer. I was going to say you weren't pulling your old iPad backup in, but it it it'll it'll pull in the backup from 10.3.2 to 10.3.3. It would pull in a backup from 10.3.2 to iOS 11. That's going to yes, work just fine. Devices run the same. OS, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so just just get yourself up to date, and you should be you should be all right. That's the uh, that's the trick. It, it that said, if you're about to head into this, let's use David's story as a cautionary tale. 
get your software all up to date first before you start doing backups and swapping and all of that. It's just way easier if everything's in sync. Um, Cause I know a lot of you are about to do this hokey pokey. If you get one new iPhone for the family and, and all of that stuff. So um, just, just be, uh, be aware. And I think everybody will make it through. So John, while we're, while we're here, Apple had their announcement this week. And, uh, and I figured we'd, we'd talk a little bit about that. I did not. So Apple announced the iPhone eight and eight plus they announced the iPhone 10. They announced the Apple TV 4k and the watch series three and three of those things went on sale uh, for pre-order on Friday. And then one of them, the iPhone 10, we've got to wait, uh, another what five or six weeks before those pre-orders happen at the end of October. I'm going to shake my fist, shake it up, baby. Well, I'm going to shake my fist because now. I was all ready to watch the event on my Apple TV and I had okay. seen the channel show up. Yeah. You know what happened? Like a few minutes before when I went to the same page, no, it said, sorry, Apple events unavailable. Try again later. I'm oh, like, are you kidding me? So what I did is went to the web page and, Airplayed it to my Apple TV, <laughs> but it was there like, what terrible timing. Yeah. I, I wasn't the only one. A lot of other people had, had problems doing it through the Apple TV. They had yet another tech glitch, I think, trying to get their. You should their have joined out. us. I was, I was surprised you didn't join us for the. Um, oh what, yeah. I saw you guys. We now call MS, I, MSTMO 4K. Uh, the yeah. I saw the that, but I think it would have been too distracting. Oh, it was great. It was fun. It was good. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I could have just done the uh, text yeah. chat. Oh, you could have, but it would have been, video. it would have been better to have you uh, on the video. <laughs> yeah. For those of you that, that don't know, we, we did, and we did this once before and we're now going to do it regularly uh, with any announcement. What, uh, what, what we came to knowingly love and call MSTMO 4k, where we um, essentially let you into the back room of TMO during an announcement. So there's the, the chatter about what's being discussed. Um, and then also our sort of discussions about, okay, you write this article, you know, you do this, how are we going to assign this stuff? But, but the, um, the, the chatter is there. And, and, and as John mentioned, there's a chat room where you folks can contribute to. And it's actually a lot of fun. Very, 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 helpful way to watch that broadcast because you kind of get everyone's perspective. Uh, you get ours, we get yours and it, it really, it works out well. So look for that the next time. We so, do it. Yeah. So that was a little, little, um, you, you were, uh, going with the model of mystery science theater, right? Well, yeah, we got a little snarky at one point and, and I, I decided because, you know, there was the 4k TV being discussed and we were TMO. It was instead of MST 3k, we, we we've now called yep. it MSTMO 4K. So there you go. For those that haven't seen it, and actually they have a new version of it now, but it um, but uh, Mystery Science Theater is well, a guy I mean, and some robots making fun of terrible, terrible, terrible movies that <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some of the worst movies ever made. The only way to get through them is to have these guys uh, riffing on them. There you go. Yeah, there you go. So. Uh, so I didn't order anything, John. I didn't order a new Apple TV because I don't have, because I have a fourth gen Apple TV and I don't have a 4k TV. So there's no reason for me to do that. Um, other than, you know, and I, I, every, every reason I'm about to share with you is like personal reasons, not business reasons. Um, but it, even from a business standpoint, without a 4k TV, there's like literally no benefit in me supporting you folks. With uh, with that, I also didn't get a, a series three watch. I'm still on a series zero Apple watch and the features that they've added don't really appeal to the way I use it. They, I mean, they've they've since series zero, they've added GPS uh, now an altimeter, now uh, an LTE chip. Right. And, and better processor for sure. But. Um, you know, I I use. I don't wear my Apple watch every day. Uh, it's, you know, probably a two to three day a week thing for me. And then I wear other watches on other days, but um, the LTE chip, I, it, well, both the LTE and the GPS are 
I, I don't need them for the same reason. And that's that I always have my phone nearby. Even when I'm out riding my bike, I always have the phone nearby. I don't swim. I don't do any of those activities where it would truly make sense to not have my phone nearby uh, when using the watch. So, so at this point, there was no real reason. We have several of them of them ordered inside the TMO family. So we can certainly help you with, with that sort of stuff. So no watch. And then with the phone, uh, I'm really on the fence about the eight versus the 10. So I didn't order an eight. Um, and I'm, I probably will order a 10 uh, in order to it really from that support standpoint. Uh, it, you know, John, I was thinking the other day, getting a new iPhone every year has put me in a place where I really never like settle in with a device and truly tweak it to my needs. Um, it's always, okay, I got it and I'm messing with it. And then it's like, Oh, it's time to replace it. And so I never kind of do that second wave with a device. Maybe that's the right way to say it. Right. We, like you do with your Mac or I do with my Macs where, you know, I get it and I migrate stuff over. And then, you know, it's somewhere in that, you know, year to 18 month mark. It's like, okay, I need to like start fresh with this thing and I have the time or whatever it is. It's like, all right, I'm going to go through and either start fresh or clean stuff out and really, really dig in. That never happens with me on an iPhone. And so part of me has been sort of excited about maybe I should just stick with the seven and, and really like tweak this thing. The last phone I did that with was my trio 650. Uh, And I made that thing like hum Everybody hated the Trio 650 because it was so unstable. And they, you are totally right about that. But if you spent the time, and this probably took me three to six months to like truly learn and tweak and get it. If you spent the time with that thing to learn what apps conflicted with others and which settings and which apps conflicted with which settings and other apps, you could, if you were willing to you know, be crazy and put in the time, you could get that thing to be like, the most reliable smartphone you ever had. And that's how it was for me. Is that uh, the, the Palm? Yeah, the Palm. Yeah. Yeah. I love that thing. I mean, I I wouldn't trade my iPhone for one today, but the point is I spent a lot of time like digging in and I just really haven't done that with the iPhone. It's just like, I have a mess of apps out there and it, you know, I, so I don't know. I got to say I'm with you. Um, but I'll probably get an iPhone 10. I mean, I, all of that said, uh, come five weeks from now, I have very little doubt that I'll be up ordering an iPhone 10. But I might wind up giving it to a member of my family instead of me. So there you go. Yeah. For me, I'm perfectly happy with the 7, to tell you the truth. Yeah. Now, I did go to my Verizon store. And uh, Verizon, like many others, uh, if you're at least halfway into a payment plan for a, a phone, they'll let you upgrade to the mm. next model. Unfortunately, as I think I told you a while ago, I had a drop event. So I have a small crack in the lower left-hand corner, non-display portion. So the phone functions perfectly. I, I, in my humble opinion, it's cosmetic damage. But when I stopped by my local Verizon corporate store, I said, what do you think? And they're like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> We're and- not going to take a phone with cosmetic damage. You're going to have to get that fixed. So I got to. I also got to decide whether... I feel it's worth it to get the screen repaired and look at who can offer that. And I think you told me that there may be someone that we've run into in the past. Well, I mean, I I cracked is one, right? Um, That's it. And I think you said they may do something nice for me. So we'll see. Yeah, you have to talk to them. But I mean, they'll come out to your house and, and, you know, do it on site. They, they have, I cracked, it's actually a pretty cool model. They have relationships with a, a bunch of, you know, independent folks out there and, and they'll, you know, they've got flat rate and it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. I've never used them. So I'd be curious to, to hear how that works, but um, yeah. 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 So yeah. 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 Is um, there a number of, uh, I mean, Apple, I think will do it for one twenty nine. I think. Yep. Which uh, yeah, but I mean, there's, you know, there's the stores like in your mall, like, uh, you, frankly, I, I'm not entirely convinced why you haven't just bought a screen and done it yourself. It's like s- super easy to do. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. I mean, All if right. somebody's going to come out to your house and do it for a flat rate, 
you know that this is not a difficult thing to do. I mean, it's you have to be comfortable opening up electronics and accepting uh, yeah. that you're going to there's a potential for you to make it a lot worse when you do. And so part of what you're paying these companies for is essentially a, a, well, you know, their a guarantee. Expertise. Yeah. And their expertise. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Because, um, yeah. Or I'll just decide not to get it fixed. Because like I said, it's the phone is perfectly functional. It's, yep. it's just something that would affect my trade in or resale value. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And the eight, you know, I looked at it. I mean, it's, you know, kind of like the OS upgrade is like, there's nothing in the eight that I found compelling enough to convince me that I should upgrade. Yeah. And I don't, I mean, am I going to have to get new accessories and stuff like that? If I get an eight, is the eight, is the eight no. the same size as eight, six, seven? Eight, okay. It's the same size as the, right. the, the eight okay. and the eight plus are the same as the seven. It's the seven okay. S right. I mean, it, it, I, I think Apple right. would have called this the seven S were it not for the thing they wanted to call the iPhone 10, because uh, I mean, if they had called it the seven S now, what happened to both the eight and the nine, as opposed to now we just ask the question, what happened to the nine? And I, I don't think we'll ever see it, but who knows? You know, uh -huh. I think, I think we'll see iPhone 11. Well, that's the, as I joked and got a mixed uh, reply to, that's the one product that they forgot to announce at the event is yeah. the iPhone nine yeah, exactly. N E I N. Yeah, exactly. In, uh, yeah. Um, so I, I uh, this time around, I think I'm, I'm, I don't think I'll bother the, the, the 10, the X. Um, I mean, some of the new features are compelling. Yeah. You it's know, a, it's a face new recognition paradigm, though. Right? I don't know if I totally am comfortable. <laughs> I don't know how I trust it. I mean, I, I like, you know, I like the uh, touch ID. The touch ID is handy. I was at a concert last night and, um, and I wanted to, I actually had to text my, my son at a certain time. Actually, I needed to remind him to put the dog out was really what it was. And I wanted that to happen before set break. So when my wife texted him on set break, she could hear, Hey, the dog's already been out and she wouldn't stress about it. So I texted him about halfway through the first set and I, I did it discreetly. It was a general admission show. It was outside. And, uh, but I didn't want to hold my phone up. I mean, I would do that if I wanted to take a picture or whatever, but I, you know, I just wanted to do it low down. And so I, I used touch ID and I kind of had the phone off axis. So it wasn't shining in anybody's eyes around me or anything. And I thought, huh, if I had face ID and not touch ID, I'd probably have to type my password to do this instead of, cause you know, otherwise I've got to look down at it and you know, I don't know, but that's sort of why I want to get the 10 is to learn about that so that we can, you know, help support you folks and, and that sort of thing. And also just to learn about it because it's, yeah. you know, I'm a geek. So and then of course it has the, uh, the, the new shiny. Well, it's, it's the biggest screen we've ever seen on an iPhone. In, oh, not that. The other thing, the, uh, the power, if you will. Oh, chi, power, chi, right? Yes. Q I pronounced chi. Yeah, that, I'm. Yeah, that's cool. I'm. I mean, yeah. I, it's. I, it will be nice. The the best part about that is that Apple's using standard uh, chi, right? And then they've got with Air Power. Whenever that actually comes out, we'll see. Uh, some enhancements to Qi that Apple is looking to make and then contribute back to the market. AirPower being the the mat that can charge multiple devices simultaneously. And that is an enhancement to Qi that Apple's working on. But but if successful, right. they plan to kind of pr contribute that tech back to the standard so everybody could support that sort of thing. So that's great. No, I, right. I, I like to see Apple doing that. And stuff. that's only on the, that, that's not on the eight. Corre not as far as we know. That's right. Okay. I was looking through the specs and I was like, yeah, that's, did I miss I something or be. are they going to offer it on both? Um, I don't, yeah, I don't know if air power, um, is available on the eight. It probably is. I would assume it is actually. Huh. I don't Again, I was looking through the specs the and I didn't see it as a point. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll look again. I mean, the, the wireless charge, the Qi charging on the eight is definitely there. Um, oh, it is. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All but right, I, just, I just, I just don't know if air power, I think it is. Yeah. I, I think air power no, would okay. work on the, on the eight as well. Yeah. And then I think you can probably get third party solutions for like my phone. If I wanted to do wireless charging, 
Well, you can get a case. I think you can already get a case that That's will. That's all. That's yeah, the I guess only it plugs solution. In, yeah. I guess it plugs into your lightning port or there's a pass through and then. Uh, Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's handy. I, I, you know, I've, yeah, I've played with it with some Android phones and it's, it's, I mean, it's nice to be able to throw it down on a pad and not have to plug it in, especially on your nightstand where you might want to just grab your phone in the morning and you're like, Oh crap. Mm-hmm. That's right. It's, you know, tethered. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, it's good. It's good. So yeah, that, and you know, the Apple TV, I'm, I'm on, I got a 1080p, so not going to do much. But you don't, me. you don't have apps on your Apple TV. No, right? mine's the third generation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And even that, the fourth generation, it, it's like, eh, do I want to run apps on my TV? Nah. I have yeah. enough fun in game. I have enough fun in games with my TiVo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. Well, no, we definitely use like things like Plex we use on the Apple oh, TV okay. all the time. And so to have that app available, uh, we, that's probably the single biggest, uh, in terms of time used, Plex is the winner on our Apple TV. Plex and, and Netflix would be a second, but, but definitely a second. We use, we use Plex to watch movies all the time on our TV. So, yeah. Yeah. Whereas yeah, yeah. I stream for my Synology. Yeah, you stream from your Synology. Oh, right. And we can use DS video on the TV so we can start the, the process from there as opposed to having to do it from our computers or phones. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so, yeah, it's and handy. The, and the watch? Hmm. I'm not really an Apple Watch person either. Though I did get a new watch. Another another Timex? Yes. All right. Hey, man. I, you well, know, the I, band broke on my old one, yeah. and I tried to find a replacement band, and uh, I'm having difficulty with that. You, so I looked at their might, product line. You might like the Apple Watch. Um, hmm. similar to me, like the special, I know you ride your bike a bunch in the summer too. And, uh, having the, like the tracking for that is pretty cool. Uh, and it's so seamless that, uh, you know, the heart rate and all that stuff. It's, it's cool to, to have that. I would, I would definitely uh, miss that if I didn't have an Apple okay. watch. Cause I will bring my phone with me and run. Yeah. But you don't run get- an app that tells me about my trip. Yeah, you get. But yeah, no, I know it wouldn't get my heart rate. Yeah, I used to just use my phone before the Apple Watch came out, and uh, and moving to the Apple Watch, it was like, okay, this is actually pretty cool. Um, you know, some sort of fitness tracking is is yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I know there are third party products of course. out there that, um, of course, you know, give you a heart rate monitor and tie yeah. into the app on the phone and stuff like yeah. that. But um, yeah. So it was. Um, hey, they're making progress. I'm sure they'll sell a whole bunch of whatever they, they offered up there. I have no doubt. Nice yeah. new venue. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's good and, stuff. Um, man. And the face thing worked exactly as it was supposed to, as far as I know. I know some people were like, oh, it failed. Are you talking about when it, when it failed for Federighi? Yeah. 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 That was just, I mean, it was just like touch ID. Too many people had looked at it. And so it went back right. into, nope, I need your passcode, man. Somebody's trying to hack. So. I mean, at first I thought it was maybe like, you know, yeah, that it was malfunctioning because like, you know, there were stage lights on them and yeah. it was just like, you know, it, you know, it, it, it couldn't adapt to that. But, right, right, um, right. No, that wasn't the problem. No, apparently it can. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, because it has nothing even, to do with stage lights. It, it's and I not even about heard that, um, And I heard it's, it even works if you're wearing cheap sunglasses. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I like that when they showed the person's face and then they started changing everything yeah. and it's like, nope, but I'll still recognize them. Yeah, for sure. Because when you think about it, people are pretty good at, I mean, there, there's, you know, I mean, I'll see people I haven't seen in years and yes. it just snaps and I'm like, is that so-and-so? I'm like, yeah, you know, I think it is. People yep. are really good at face ID, so. Yeah, humans, you're right. right. Humans computer. are very good at face ID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting stuff. I, like I said, it, I, I think it's cool. I, I you know, I, um, and I'm, I'm really curious to check out the iPhone 10. Um, I have a feeling that in a sense, it will be like checking out the iPhone one in, in that a year from now, whoever has the iPhone 10 is really going to want the iPhone 11, right? Assuming it's based on the same, you know, this new paradigm, because that's going to be the one where they sort of not, not just get all the kinks out, but add the features that, you know, people find are, are lacking from this. Like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we want. Cause they get about eh, what three, four months of use time with this one in the, in the, 
general public before they have to start committing to design decisions for the next one. So yeah, I'm, I think it's cool. I, I, you know, it's fun. It's fun. Uh, and yet all like, like all fun things, the, the event ended and this show too must come to an end. It's huh. just how it goes. I know. I know. I this know. is the end. No, no, I'm not only... like that kind of end. No, <laughs> no, that's a way different, man. Whoa, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> yeah, kind of dark. Huh? That's dark. Yeah, yeah. We detoured into banks, and then you know the door's most edible moment possible. That's um, that's pretty intense, man. I think that's intense. I don't know. What do you think, folks? You can tell us. Feedback at MacGeekab.com. No, 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 no. Feedback at MacGeekab.com. I think you said feedback at MacGeekab.com, John. You can call us if if you you care to at 224-888-GEEK. Which, John, is? 4335? I think that's correct. 4335 will work. If you're a premium listener, you can uh, email us at premium at MacGeekUp.com. We certainly appreciate that. And like we said earlier in the show, visit us at slash Facebook. That is, uh, is a nice, fun home for us at the moment. I'm thinking of moving that home sort of in a house that we own as opposed to a house that Facebook owns. So I'm curious as to your thoughts on that. Let us know what you might think about that because I've been playing with engines that might actually be better suited for a discussion like that. Uh, I do want to thank several different independent groups and entities. The first one, of course, is all of you, our listeners. Thank you so much. You make it so that we do this every week. I mean, it's, I don't feel like you have a gun to our head or anything. I, like, we like doing it, and we like doing it for you. So thank you. Uh, I also want to thank Cashfly, dot com for providing all the bandwidth to get the show from us to you. I want to thank our sponsors, of course, Otherworld Computing at MaxSales.com, and then the folks in the podcast marketplace, Smile at SmileSoftware.com, Barebones Software at Barebones.com. Such good stuff. You can read all about our sponsors at MacGeekGab.com slash sponsors. What do you think, John? Anything? Uh, I mean, I think we kind of said it all, right? Should we just go? Or is there anything left to left to say? Hmm. Oh, oh, I know. Don't get caught. Made up. <laughs>